You'll have had your tea, the doings of Hamish and Dougal. Today, Romance in the Glen. Hamish. Ah, oh, Dougal, you'll have had your tea. Uh, well, uh, I wouldn't say no to a cuppy. Oh, dear, just when I've run out. I haven't a leaf in the hoose. Goodbye. Oh, well, uh, uh, a coffee would be fine. Oh, ho, ho, ho. coffee, is it? Coffee? His lordship fancies a coffee, does he? I'd better tug my forelock and fill the catheter. What, what's got into you, man? Nothing. Hey, Mish, old friend, what the devil's the matter with you? Not a thing. You've been acting very strangely lately. We've all seen you mooning about the village. Well, my kilt got stuck in my belt. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, Mrs. McAllister had to ask you to move away from her hot cross bun display. <laughs> uh... <laughs> That's typical... Always coming out with a funny crack. That's what Mrs. McAllister said. <laughs> Gee whiz, Hamish, now I look at you. What's all this? A new hat, calfskin gloves, the ceremonial sparring complete with antlers and the eyes that move. <laughs> and unless I'm very much mistaken, you've sponged your kilt. <laughs> I've always been very particular about my appearance, as well you know. Unlike some people with their tartan dungarees and hobnail sandals. If they were good enough for Mother, they're good enough for me. <laughs> but, but look here, look here, this whole room has had a makeover. And, oh, this is new. Aye, it's an escritoire. An escritoire, is it? Oh, very wise. You don't want to be popping down to the bottom of the garden in the middle of the night. <laughs> exactly. Ah, you never know when you might get the sudden urge to write a letter. <laughs> True. Uh, of course, I'm not one for writing letters. Oh, really? Then what's uh, this? Give that here. Oh, no, no, no. Let's see. What does it say? My dearest darling, blah, 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 I shall never forget the first time I saw your blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I long to blah, blah, blah. Yours in the hope that we blah, 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 affectionately blah, blah, blah. Well, this looks to me like it could be a love letter if it wasn't for all the blah, blah, blahs. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that. No. <laughs> oh, you've torn it. Right along the perforation. <laughs> Aye, it may be soft, but it's not as strong as they make out, is it? <laughs> oh. You've ruined it, you clumsy gowk. No, 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 it's still perfectly usable. No, it is not. <laughs> that was an anonymous love letter. Who to? I told you it was anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> Do I spy Cupid's dart? Oh, no, kilt stuck in the belt again. <laughs> Here we are. Have I earned your other sock? Oh, Mrs. Nochty, I believe this is for you. Oh, put it away. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I meant this paper. Oh, how very <laughs> thoughtful. Now, off you go. I'm not using that escritoire with you two in the room. Stop. That love letter is not intended for our resourceful treasure of a housekeeper, Mrs. Nochty, here. I should hope not. There was enough trouble when you hit on me in the scullery. <laughs> I've told you, woman, I was just trying to pick up a parsnip. <laughs> It's writing love letters now, is it? This doesn't, by any chance, have anything to do with the new tenant at Capercaillie Lodge. Maybe. Oh, 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 it's all coming out now. Oh, damn this belt. <laughs> come along, come along, Mrs. Nochty. Spit it out. Very well. <laughs> Good shot. <laughs> Good shot. Have a goldfish. No. <laughs> No, thank you.
thank you. I've just spat one out. <laughs> a bizarre interlude, but let it not deflect us from our purpose. Who is this mysterious tenant of the lodge? Lady Caroline Fitzneatley. Oh. <laughs> this has gone further than we thought. Lady Caroline is a society beauty from Chelsea, no less. She's up for the fishing, and that's not all she's up for by all accounts. Oh, I'll never forget the first time I saw her. The wind blowing in her hair, sitting on top of Ben Affleck. Oh, I can see her now eating a picnic lunch. The moment I saw her, I felt something snap. You know, I'd get rid of that belt if I was you. <laughs> Hamish, old friend, whatever made you think that a sophisticated society beauty like Lady Caroline would give a second glance to a clapped-out, ignorant, clumsy, repulsive, unhygienic peasant like you, you ugly old bastard? <laughs> Oh, I know you're just trying to make me feel better, but <laughs> I must follow my dream. What can you see, Mrs. Nochte? I can see the two of them on the river bank. Lady Caroline is casting a line across the current, and Mr. Hamish is standing close beside her, murmuring into her ear as she turns her head towards him, a smile playing about her rose-red lips. Good, that's exactly what I can see. <laughs> but thank you for painting that vivid word picture for the benefit of those who may be listening. <laughs> Look, she appears to be admiring his flies. <laughs> Quick, quick, pass me those binoculars. Oh, I can't reach them. Oh, damn. Hamish, can you reach the binoculars? Ah, here you are. Oh, 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 hello, you two. I told you we were too close. <laughs> May I, uh... Oh. 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 May I introduce my friend, uh, Lady Caroline Fitzneatley. How do you do? Hello, Lady Caroline. I believe this is your first time. Oh, she soon got the hang of it. <laughs> soon as I took my tackle out, there was no stopping her. Dear Hamish has been teaching me how to handle his rod, or cock as we call it in London society. <laughs> Ah, uh, that's Hamish for you. Uh, well, I, uh, I can see that you two young things want us to hang around for a bit, so... Uh... Back to the fishing. Right-ho. Here goes. Oh, dear. It seems to me we're having a little trouble with the casting. Well, I'm doing my best. You told me I was only playing Mrs. Nocty. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. oh, look! James, it's a big one. Help her pull it out. She's handling it like an old pro. Oh, I do love it when you talk fishing. All together now. Heave! Oh, oh, oh. oh it's on the bank. What a monster. Good afternoon. Glory be a talking fish. It's me, the lad. And who is this saucy little charmer? It's Hamish. <laughs> no. no, no, of course I recognize that clapped out, ignorant, clumsy, repulsive, unhygienic peasant's face, the ugly old bastard. <laughs> then it's true. <laughs> I was referring to the lady. Oh, this is Lady Caroline Fitzneatley. Lady Caroline, this is the talking fish. Charmed, I'm sure. Forgive me if I don't get up. I was in the river having my morning dip with chives. When suddenly <laughs> you hauled me out. You must excuse the rubber suit. Not at all. The waistcoat is charming. And may I say, the carnation is a delightful touch. Yes, well, it was either there or in the buttonhole. 
Lady Caroline, will you walk a little way with me? I'd be glad to. Goodbye, Hamish. Goodbye, Dougal. Goodbye, Goodbye fish. fish. Oh, my dear. I'm terribly sorry. It's this new girdle. Oh. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll soon have that ripped off. <laughs> Oh, James. What? What is it, old friend? You can't know what it feels like when the love of your life goes off with a talking fish. Oh, but I do. <laughs> oh, I can just imagine them now lying naked in front of a roaring fire. Tucking into place and chips. Oh, surely not. Oh, yes. He tried that on with me, you know. <laughs> well, I wasn't having any of it. I should hope not. You're a haddock man, if ever there was one. Ah, true. <laughs> now, please, old friend, leave me alone with my thoughts and my pain. Are you... Are you sure you'll be all right? Because when you came in on that unicycle with an orange wig and a custard pie, I, I thought... I hope he's not going to do anything silly. <laughs> oh, cruel world. What's left for the likes of me? Here we are. Oh. A nice bit of haddock for your tea. Thank you, Mrs. Nochty. Oh, bum hoots. Here's a nice bit of haddock for your tea, the new, by the way. Haddock? What luck, my favourite? Oh, it's rather chewy. You! I don't know how you dare show your face and sit there chewing my haddock. Calm yourself, Hamish. I'm here to tell you, you've had a lucky escape. How so? Lady Caroline's so-called Fitzneakley has made fools of us all. I discovered her true nature when I caught her rifling through my drawers. Luckily, I wasn't wearing them at the time. <laughs> And the rifle wasn't loaded. I knew it. I knew it. I knew she was a common fortune-hunting tart the minute I heard that phony accent. You're a fine one to talk. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, she was just after my money. I sent her packing when she confessed the only man she ever truly loved was Hamish. She what? Yes, Hamish was her heart's desire. So I chased her off with the dogs. <laughs> a happy conclusion for one and all. No, no. Wait a minute. We won't be seeing her again, the trollop. Hurrah! Hurrah! Now you're all invited up to the big hoose for place and chips in front of a roaring fire. But, uh, but no, I... come on, man, Hurrah! it'll do you good. Mrs. Nochty, put out that fire, let's all put our clothes back on, and away, <laughs> up to the big hoose. No, no, what but... What are we waiting for? That's the spirit. Lead on, fish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but no, but wait, no, but... The but... You'll have had your tea. The doings of Hamish and Dougal was written and performed by Barry Cry and Graham Darden, with Alison Stedman as Mrs. Nockley and Lady Caroline Fitzneakley and Jeremy Hardy as the Laird. The music was arranged by John Darden and performed by Ros Stevens, Francis Dawling, Scott Hammond and Pete Rossum. The producer was John Naismith. <laughs> <laughs>